these constraints in detail now. What you are seeing is here a client and a server. The very first and the very basic constraint applied by REST. REST defines that any two nodes in the network or the distributed network has to be connected and operated as client and being a server. The reason being we can separate the content of input output of data with that of processing of the data. Over here what you see is a single client and a server. In a normal operational mode, client takes the input and sends the data to the server. Server processes the data and returns back the data or the response to the client. Client once again uses the response and offers it to the user using the client. This is how a basic client-server communication is established first in the place. So why are we doing the separation of content? What is the benefit of doing so? It is simply because anywhere when we separate the contents of data and its processing, we can add more number of clients to the server. Because we have now separated the input output and with that of processing, more number of clients can now connect to the same server, which is the key and the basic or the fundamental constraint imposed by REST architecture, where your client and server have to operate like client and server, one being the input output handling, the other being processing this uh, data and returning back the response. We will in detail list down the benefit of this when we would also take up the cloud. Let's move on to the next constraint, stateless. Stateless constraint is second most important principles or constraint in REST architecture. Stateless simply doesn't mean that application should not have any state. Developing an application without a state, in, state engine or a state would be really boring and of no much use. REST principle states that the communication between client and server or the communication itself should not have any state information stored on the server. The reason being, storing any state on the server would complicate the things in terms of reliability. Hence, server transfers the state information to client. Because the state is not transferred to the client, a client can talk to more than one server to do the same job or to execute the same workflow. And a server can talk to multiple clients to execute the same job. Imagine a workflow where a workflow starts on a mobile application but ends on a PC or even a tablet. Such kind of web transactions or workflow is possible only when your client and server communication is stateless. So how is it exactly derived in terms of programming or in terms of more concrete understanding? Stateless simply means that when a client makes a request to the server, client should provide all the data or the state information to the server which is required or needed by the server to process the request and return back the data. That is what the stateless actually means in terms of REST architectural constraint. You will see that how stateless server or the stateless communication makes humongous impact on scalability of distributed hypermedia systems. With that, We'll move on to the next architecture constraint. Cache 
as simply known, I think many people understand cash as uh, data stored locally. However, in terms of architectural principles, cash is a very important thing and plays a very significant role in terms of quality attributes of a network architecture. In, as you can see, there are more than one client communicating with the server. However, when number of clients increases, your servers will have to be increased as well. So many often, 99% uh, of the time, the data would mostly look the same or static or it is almost not changing within the shorter period of time. Still, clients make a trip to the server and eat up the network bandwidth, hence impacting the efficiency of the network systems. In order to address this, REST talks about caching of data in more than one places. As you can see on your screens, we introduced cache on multiple places. A cache can be on your PCs or on your local network or even on your corporate firewall or even on network gateways or even on your internet provider gateway. Even many servers employ reverse caching where many of the frequently hitting requests will simply get back the data with the HTTP response code of 304, which simply means the request did not got processed but simply returned back using the already cached data, which is as good as processed data. This is made possible by explicitly labeling the responses as cacheable or non-cacheable by the server which is implementing the RESTful architecture. With this labeling, many of your PCs, browsers, systems, or the proxy servers know whether they should cache the data and return back the data to their clients or not. Wherever the data is marked as cacheable is cached with an expiry time limit and the same data is written back to the client whenever somebody requests for it. This is extremely valuable when you look at the mobile or the tablet or even a TV based communication. It vastly improves your network bandwidth and reduces the latency. Let's move on to the next architecture constraint. Next architecture constraint is uniform interface, which is the key differentiator for defining the rest. Uniform interfaces simply means generality of interfaces, that is, the communication between client and server should be in a uniform interface so that standard mechanisms can be applied. On your screens, you can see that the client and servers each connected are a standard interface. They are communicating over a standard interface. Not only the client and server, because it is uniformly interfaced, as well as it is cacheable, any of the intermediaries like your PG browser cache or even the proxy servers or gateway proxies do can cache the data using this uniform interface and can still communicate the standard mechanism. You will see that uniform interfaces translating to URI or the URLs, which simply means that it is a unique identification for the resource you are accessing over the web, which is served using the server. We'll go to the next architecture constraints. As you can see now, we introduced client and server, and then we introduced caching, and then we introduced uniform interfaces, which enables us to talk to different servers 
irrespective of the topology of the network servers. Topology never remains the same across multiple platforms and multiple devices and multiple technologies we use in modern world. Because of layered architecture constraints, we can achieve n number of innovations and benefits. Today, almost all complex web applications are layered. In terms of REST architecture constraint, layered simply means that a component within a layer talking to another component can only know about the layer details of the immediate component it is talking to. It need not necessarily know anything about any other layer or the component outside of its layer. This abstraction helps scale or introduce new abstraction layers without impacting the other layers. Thanks to the uniform interfaces, it makes it even more simple and manageable to introduce newer layers. As you can see on your computer, we have shown you news and content and weather as the three different layers, whereas all the clients or the PCs, mobile phones and tablets are connecting to a new server which in terms is layered or content separately and the weather separately. So when a client requests to the server, server aggregates the data or can collect the data from both content as well as the weather server and offer it as a single response to all the clients. We can easily introduce a share market server in between this layer and also offer share codes and share prices to these clients. This is how layered architectural constraint is useful because of the threat principles. All right, with this, we'll move on to the next architectural constraint. which is core on demand. The core on demand REST architecture constraint is an optional constraint simply because of the security constraints that may be there in the network architecture. Core on demand in REST indicates that along with the data or the metadata that is being passed by the server or the state information passed by the server to its client server can also pass on a code which can be executed by its clients. This is avoided or blocked in many of the conditions due to the security concerns. However, with the modern day JavaScript and rich web client technologies, this is no more a thing to worry, but many places this is not allowed. However, this is an optional constraint and hence care should be taken so that if anywhere or in a network this kind of code passing is blocked, it will not break your system. We'll discuss an example of this and benefit of this with respect to cloud architecture in a little while. So let us summarize once again all the REST architecture constraint that we discussed about. We discussed about the client server which is a separation of concerns mainly in terms of user interface and data storage which allows components to evolve independently allowing their web scale development which also makes the servers know nothing about the client and only clients know about the server. The second constraint stateless. Client-server communication should be stateless. Session state is never allowed to be on the server. Each request from client must contain all the data or the information necessary for the server to process. The third and fourth, cache and uniform interfaces. 
equally enable the scalability, manageability, and bandwidth in the network architecture systems. The last two layer, code on demand, are another two key essentials for REST principles.